Everyone turn to your neighbor and say, you're the judge. Yeah. You're to be a judge. We're to be judging. Amen? People say, don't judge me, baloney. I'm going to judge your fruits. I'm a fruit inspector. <laughs> but we're to be judging the world and what's going on. In fact, the word says that we are to be judging the world. We will even judge angels when it comes time. Think about all this. God created us. His purpose was that we'd be in his image and likeness and character so that we would be the offsprings of God, the creator of all things, whoever was, who is, and to come. Our peanut brain has a hard time to even comprehend that. We look in the mirror and we still allow the mirror to dictate who we are. <laughs> Does everybody get that? We still allow the things that happen, the things where we're successful in, and the things that we're failure in dictate who we are. And we can't allow that. We must resist that. Amen? We must resist that. Because God says something different about you than what the world will dictate. God says something different about you than what your friends dictate. God says something different about you than what the media dictates and the movies dictate and the music dictates. The world is against you. The world hates us. And if you're a part of the world, then you'll hate us too. But the world is perishing. And those who are staying with the world will perish with it. We are in the last days. People have been hearing this for years. You're in the last days. But there's so many prophetic events that have occurred that it confirms we are in the last days. One of the largest confirmations that we are in the last moments is when the U.S. Embassy moved to Jerusalem. Amen. Now we know. There is no doubt or hesitation. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, Hallelujah. Is everybody there? <clears throat> Let's speak it. Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In other words, a person that's in love, trying to save their life according to the ways of the world, means they love the world. And it says that the love of the Father is not in them. It means that they're not able to receive the love of the Father, even though the love of the Father is trying to penetrate every part of their being. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away. It's passing away. And the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. In other words, there's a lot of proclamations in the area of all kinds of religions, all kinds of things going on, people, false Christians, false teachings, doctrines of demons. It says that they went out from us, but they were not of us. Why did they go out from us? Because they were not of us, because they were not able to resist. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest. That none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I've not written you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. See, you and I have been taken out of the world system of corruption, which is led by demonic influence of overwhelming desires. They bombard our mental frequencies of thought and images through eyes and ear gates. But we've been given the anointing, the power through the Holy Spirit. As we yield to him, 
to overcome. In other words, we must yield to him to overcome and resist the influence. Those that depart and forsake to fellowship is because of the lack of the anointing to resist. You know, we have a, a meeting called Beyond 12 Steps. In our last gathering together, we were talking about resistance, the level of resistance. And it just stayed with me. And, and the Holy Spirit said, I want you to teach on this. And it, but he gave me the title called The Power to Resist. It is the power to resist. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Now we have another teaching in our library called Resistance is few or No. I forgot what it is. Resistance is futile? Yeah. Resistance is futile. That's what the Borg tell everyone before they kill them. <laughs> That's in Star Trek if you don't know. Colossians chapter three. That's what we need to tell the enemy. Resistance is futile. Many people don't say that, though they run. Or they surrender to the will of the devil because they're not able to resist. Colossians chapter 3. Is everybody there? You know, think about this. Judas, who sat with Jesus at the same table who ministered along with Jesus. Even though he saw Jesus, he saw all the miracles and signs and wonders, but he never got connected. Never got connected. And was not able to resist the temptation. And what did he end up doing? Betraying Christ and committing suicide because he was not able to resist. Look at Esau. Esau, because he was not able to resist the influence, sold his eternal birthright for a bowl of soup to fulfill his flesh. Sold it. And then afterwards said, what do I care about this inheritance? Man, did he regret it? You know, it's too late to regret when you're in hell. And there's not one believer in hell. They're all believers now. But there is a point where we've got to begin to realize whether we're on the path of hell or the path of heaven. Regardless of whether you believe it or not. God sees all and knows all. Every one of us will give account to him. Everyone. Nobody escapes that. Nobody. In verse 1, would you read it with me? If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. And set your mind, your thoughts, set your attitude and your motives on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your life is hidden in Christ with God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons and daughters of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth, 
And do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man which is on his way to hell with his deeds. And put on the what? New man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Wow. Does everybody see this? So if you and I die to the old life and your new life now is hidden with Christ in God. But so many times we're allowing the mirror to dictate. We're allowing the world to dictate. We're losing our identity because of our successes and failures and talents and abilities not going to God first. Everything else becoming an idol. So our new life that is hidden with Christ in God is expressing Christ's character. I got to tell you that there is no room for two kinds of life in one body. You will either love the one and hate the other. You cannot serve two masters. Amen. We are to be dying to human desires of corruption and sin and bring fellowship within your body and perfect cooperation to overcome so that you and I can resist with the power of Christ. First thing you got to do is be aware of it. If you're not aware of it, then you've been taken totally captive. That's where we need to have that perfect discernment so we can target these areas. Remember, the devil comes to blind. He comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. He comes to make us stupid so that we can't hear or see or receive the things of God. He brings, he causes us to get hard-hardened. He allows, he comes and creates offense so that we then hold resentment and bitterness towards one another. That means all those things are references of stepping out of the life of God and stepping into the old life of evil. And Galatians chapter 2. But we must resist because we have the power to resist. Galatians chapter 2. In verse 17. But if, are we in the right place? While we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. In other words, if I'm building on those things I've been freed from and I go back to them, now I've disconnected from God. For, though, for through the law... Uh, for I, through the law, died to the law, but that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the physical realm, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for it is righteousness comes through the law that Christ died in vain. So we know that righteousness did not come through the law. In other words, when we begin to stepping out of the life of Christ, it makes us a transgressor. We're stepping out of Christ means we're stepping into darkness. Only cooperation in the life of Christ will produce righteousness, which is the essence of the life of Christ. It's called righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. So you must discern whether you are stepping out or stepping in. It only takes one decision to step out. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. That's why we need the fellowship. That's why we need to stir one another up. That's why we need to worship and be filled with the Spirit of God. Verse 
That's why we need to get connected. In verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Everyone say comfort. Who comforts us in all tribulation. Have you been comforted through your tribulations? That we may be able to comfort those, what? Who are in any trouble with the comfort which we, we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolation. In other words, we need revelation that God has chosen us to go through certain experiences to profit or to comfort others, revealing the power to, for others to resist. Does everybody get this? In other words, everything that you're going through, you'll be able to pass it on to someone else and how you were able to resist or go through it. See, that's what the word says, go through. Too many people are still in it because they haven't resisted. And the enemy has overtaken them. And so this comfort for me and you that comes from God is revealing the power to resist in our lives. We're allowing God to comfort us. See, so many times people aren't allowing God to comfort them. They're so caught up, so tormented, they can't get comforted. They haven't resisted torment so God can comfort them. They haven't resisted the condemnation and the guilt and shame so God can comfort them. We must resist it to allow God in. These are things that prevent God from coming in. Offense, resentment, all of these areas. This is where we must bring self-examination. What's my attitude? What's my attitude towards people? Is there someone that's a that you are still got a bad attitude toward. That means you're stepping out of the life of Christ. Romans 12. Romans. Power to resist. Hallelujah. In verse 1, Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or your reasonable service. That's a daily thing. If a person isn't willing to surrender, they can't resist. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and that acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say to the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith, or what we want to say, a measure of resistance. A measure of the power to resist. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. In other words, you have been granted a measure of power to resist. The problem is, is many people don't use it. So there's an area where we begin to build on the strength of our resistance. It's reaching each level. Remember, we talked about the master's level. We want to reach the master's level of everything. It's called the third level. We want to reach that master's level of resistance. Look at how Jesus resisted. He resisted. He resisted the enemy in every area. Of course, he combated with his presence. 
the presence of the Holy Spirit and his word. But he resisted all the way to the cross. All the way. Come on, think about it. I know that if one of us was God and they were trying to put nails in your wrists and in your feet, you'd probably kick the bejeebies out of them. You ain't touching me, homie. We'd be try, probably trying to save our life. But he came to give it. But now we're to give our life that others can be saved. Amen? Oh, John 6. Look at how, what happened to Job. Think about that. When the devil came, Jesus set Job up. But he gave Job the power to resist. Does everybody understand that? See, God doesn't set you up without power. Verse uh, 43, John 6, 43. <laughs> so people are afraid that Jesus is going to set them up, but they don't realize that he's going to give them the power to overcome. I hear these religious folks pray. They tell me, don't pray for patience. <laughs> don't pray for patience. Why? I ask them why. Then, then you're going to get tested. Good. Because God always provides power when a test comes. See, but they're so caught up in self. They don't get it. And they even know the word, and they still don't get it. Don't pray for patience. You better pray for endurance. That's the same thing. Great made of strength to endure. <laughs> Verse 43. Jesus, therefore, answered and said to them. Is everybody there? Do not what? Murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who has sent me, what? Draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. For it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Does everybody get this? So the Father draws us. In other words, when he draws you, he gives you a measure of Resistance, power to resist. Because when he's drawing you, he's giving you enough power to say, okay, I want you. All right, I'm willing. I surrender. He gives you enough power to escape. Does everybody get it? When the Father draws, he gives a measure of power to resist. Once in Christ, the power to resist will increase. <laughs> and then increase of a desire to stay in Christ, and we will learn more. Once we are in Christ, the power to resist will begin to increase and increase. And God will begin to expose those areas in your life where you're weakening in resistance. And he'll need to keep coming back up. He'll keep pushing that button until it finally doesn't work. <laughs> it's broke. Luke 9. The button will break or you will. <laughs> Luke 9.23. <laughs> so the Father draws us. He gives us a measure of power to resist so we can grab hold of him, accept Christ and salvation. In verse 23, it says, And, to him, to, and then he said to them all, everyone say all, all, if anyone desires to come after me, in other words, so the Father's drawing them, right? Now what is it? So he's given them enough 
strength and power to resist so that they can say, I want to. And, if he, and then he says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Now he come, gets into a position where he's able to resist his old man, his old self, and take up his cross or sword and fight and follow. For whoever desires to save his life will what? Lose it. But whoever loses his life, the old life, for my sake will what? Save it. For what profit is a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words and of him, the Son of Man, will be ashamed when Jesus comes in his glory and his fathers and the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Denying yourself the power to resist, to resist self, selfishness, selfish ambitions, in the lust of the world. You and I have been granted a measure of power to resist. We, begin, we need to begin to use this. And the more that we stay connected, the more we get filled, the more we utilize the word, the more we eat, the more we strengthen our inner man, that power to resist strengthens more and more and more. But again, God will show you the areas where we are weak in resistance. James. They're related, though. James 4. Oh, hallelujah. And verse 6. Is everybody there? But he what? Did y'all bring your Holy Ghost eraser? Good. You need it. <laughs> but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. God resists the proud. We must resist pride. We must resist pride. We must resist offense. We must resist resentment and temptation. We must resist sin. We must resist lust. Because of these things cause us to step out of Christ into deception and darkness. We must resist an ungrateful attitude. Amen? And a bad attitude towards others. Why? Because those are all associated with those things that we don't resist. God will resist us. We do want... God's grace, which is his plan to escape. Amen? Verse 7, therefore do what? Submit to God. Then you will be able to resist the devil and he will what? He will flee from you. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Yes. And lament and mourn, weep, let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will do what? He'll lift you up. He'll lift you up. Listen, you may act like you're submitting, but you're not resisting. The level of resistance is the level of your relationship. We must resist to react. Because, see, the enemy always wants you to react. Because if he knows you so in the flesh, he can get access to you. We must resist to react. We must resist the old nature, the old habits, thoughts, desires. How about the old fears? Offenses, anxiousness, temptations. We have the power to resist. People become compromising, complacency, and lazy. And they let the enemy run all over them. James 1. It's like an abusive relationship. Many people have fallen into abusive relationships and it's very hard for them to get out of because they live in fear. And then they've been so brought down and so disconnected from encouragement 
that they're afraid to make the move. And the enemy just steps in and beats and beats and beats. And uh, that person loses hope. Eventually that person tries to get on drugs, alcohol, to try and overcome these things. But alcohol, drugs, and antidepressants do not give you the power to resist. Those are the things we need to resist. They actually open the door and weaken our resistance. James 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Everyone say blessed. blessed. Who endures, who overcomes, who resists. For when he has been approved... He will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his what? His own lustful desires and entice. Then when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. So again, we see this, which is powerful, because you and I are to resist the drawing influence to be tempted and overcome the desire to react according to the ways of the flesh. We don't want to do that. Amen? We want to constantly resist that arena. God will sift all of our weaknesses to perfect his saints. He will sift them. That's why you go through it. But again, we go through it. It's the ones that are still stuck in it that are not resisting. 2 Peter 2. The power to what? Resist. You need to ask yourself what level are you at of resistance? Second Peter 2, 4. Second Peter 2, verse 4. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. That was an example. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of what? Temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas as angels who are great greater in power and might, do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Now this is powerful because in this we got to look at something to the area to where the power to resist until we are rescued. So many times people are not willing to resist. Listen, God is making a way. He's always preparing for a rescue. He's always trying to get us out of debt. He's always trying to get us into a place. Something is coming. He's trying to get us out of bondage. He's trying to get us into a place of freedom. He's trying to bring healing to our bodies. He's trying to do all kinds of stuff. But the areas the enemy will bring things of false comfort, false information. And what it does is it weakens our resistance to wait on the Lord. 
Does everybody get that? To wait on the Lord. So many times people quit their jobs because they're not able to resist at work. Well, it's just an ungodly place. Well, did you get to tell everyone about Jesus yet? God doesn't move you until everyone's been had an opportunity. Amen? But so many people are so easily offended because they don't have the strength to resist offense or resentment. Some people have purchasing problems. They can't resist a good deal and not wait for a God deal. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> See, people are willing to accept the good, not wait for the best. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Ephesians 6. Many times people have a hard time resisting the enemy's discouragement, disappointments. They even have a hard time resisting pain. You know, they get any kind of a slight pain. Oh, give me a medication. Amen. I think I have a headache coming. <laughs> what do you mean you think you have a headache coming? Do you or don't you? Oh, no, I think I have one coming. Well, resist it. Amen. Advil's not your God. Amen. But God can use it, I can tell you that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Seek the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you, but seek his righteousness, right? Ephesians 6.10. Woohoo! Let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Again, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That means you got to yield to the Holy Spirit and get out of the way. You got to stop thinking about how you're going to do it and Allow him to start thinking on how he will do it. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. That means resist against the trickery of the devils and the evil influences. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. People need to resist some of this media. Do not listen to CNN and MSNBC. They lie. And m many other of them. They watch these goofy Springer flicks. What is that, dude? Jerry Springer. Who's, who's the other moron? Well, anyways. The View. Bunch of morons. They're all antichrist. People don't even see the fruit of it. They like the entertainment, but not knowing that they're receiving corruptible seeds in them that has weakened their resistance. They're listening to this funky music that's weakened their resistance. And then they blame God. I can't believe you let this happen to me, God. God's saying, I can't believe you're that stupid. <laughs> we build resistance always, thriving to reach the next level. Now check this out. The power of his might is to stand and resist all floods of the enemy in the power of his presence and the power of his word. The power of his presence and the power of his word. These are the two witness powers to resist. His presence and his word. People are praying for healing while they stash those Twinkies. Juju beads and everything else.
Hello? People are trying to stop drinking while they stash the bottles of alcohol. They try to stop smoking while they still carry a, a lighter and a pack of cigarettes. And, well, I'm waiting for God to remove it. Well, no, you got to throw it first. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Again, we build resistance, always thriving to the, reach the next level. 2 Timothy 2. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace and the plan that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must what? Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare. If you're engaged in warfare, entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Why? Because it won't work. That he may please him who has enlisted him as a soldier. And also if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of change. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And I'm going to uh, build the power to resist. What's the purpose of the power to resist? So that we can bear the image of Christ. Amen. We're no longer living for our image. We are living for the image of the Lord. So we have the power to resist to bear the image of the Lord. That's why. He resisted everything. Everything. The enemy had no place. And the word says, make no place for the enemy. Remember, practice makes perfect. Amen. Where you're weak, believe me, God will expose it. In fact, you already know where you're weak at. Stop it! <laughs> for I bury you alive. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4. Hallelujah. Just stop it. <laughs> if you ever you haven't seen Bob Newhart when he was counseling this one woman, it's hilarious. It's only a few minutes long. Look it up on Google. It was his final counseling. Stop it. Just stop it before I bury you alive because she was afraid about being buried alive. And he's like, what? So he told her she had a few minutes. You have five minutes. <laughs> and that's a dollar a minute. <laughs> Anyways, I go on. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 16. Therefore, we do not what? We don't what? We don't what? Come on, everybody, say it. Lose heart. Not lose heart, lose heart. We don't lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, say light affliction. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's a light affliction. Quit exaggerating it. <laughs> For our light affliction, 
which is but for a moment. Tell your neighbor, tell them it's only a moment, even though it feels a lifetime. <laughs> it's working for us. Say it's working for you. Tell them again, it's working for you. It's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we don't look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So our light afflictions, they are building the power to resist and to bear the image of the Lord. Isn't that the ultimate goal? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this revelation and, and illumination bring impartation to each and every one of us today. That we may have the desire to bear the image of the Lord and express his character. And the power to resist all areas of evil, worldly, ungodly, and lustful influence in Jesus name everybody say amen